I got my notes here because I can't go off the cuff. Been meaning to make this video for a while. My beliefs as of 2023. I'm not going to cite any sources because I've read a lot and couldn't remember everything that went into it. But 98% of what's in here is in the Bible. So read the Bible is my advice if you want to read this in a book. So first, the oldest, most powerful form of magic is living up to your word. I put that in the quote, under promise, over deliver, and people will believe in you. Uh, I got more written on magic, I wrote this out of order. Um, magic is real, but the only reliable form of magic is humble thaumaturgy. I mean that in the sense of practicing thaumaturgy while being humble. Thaumaturgy means miracle working. The Quran says, the enlightenment of disbelievers will come as flashes of lightning, will illuminate things temporarily, and they will be returned to darkness. That's the enlightenment of disbelievers. Magic that is not viewed as a focus for prayer will sometimes succeed and sometimes fail, as it is God's will that the disbelievers increase their doubt by the same means that the believers increase their faith. I got more on magic in here, but I'll get to it when I get to it. The Torah and Christian Gospels alone feel incomplete, and that's because the Quran completes them. The Quran teaches us that God conceals as he reveals, and that some passages of scripture aren't meant to make sense. God knows the meaning. Dwell on what you do understand, and be open to human messengers explaining what you do not. And open-mindedness does not equate to blanket acceptance. God's word is beyond the ability of humans to adulterate. The message can be understood by those who are looking to understand rather than those who are trying to disprove it. That's why it doesn't matter what translation of the Bible you use. My personal favorite is the Tree of Life version. I read every version when it's convenient. The, the Bible is God's word. It doesn't matter what 50 bishops 70 years ago decided how to translate Hebrew and Aramaic. It's God's word. And even if those 50 bishops didn't believe in God, God will allow God's message. God wills that God's message be conveyed, regardless of who's trying to adulterate his words. God is more powerful than disbelievers. That's just a fact. It's, we're talking about God here. God's all-powerful. If you remove disbelievers from your social circle, and you remove yourself from conversations that are centered on disbelief, and you're patient, God will reward your faith by putting believers in your circle to increase your faith. Already said that. Now on the difference between exoteric and esoteric. Now, exoteric means understood by all, almost everyone. Esoteric means understood by a small amount of people. Neophytes often operate under the impression that if something is exoteric, it isn't worth learning. The truth is, if you can't wrap your mind around the exoteric, the esoteric will be just as lost on you. An example of this is the exoteric lesson, love thy neighbor. One must first practice love before they can understand the esoteric lesson of Christian admonishment. First we practice love by being kind, then we may show love by guiding, or helping to guide. Regarding the Demiurge, the Demiurge is really popular right now, most popular he's been to talk about in 1400 years. The Gnostic teaching is that the Demiurge arose out of wisdom, attempting to understand chaos. Wisdom, Sophia, attempted to comprehend chaos. And so the Demiurge was created. The Demiurge is an incomplete image because wisdom arose out of chaos. Wisdom cannot comprehend that which is greater than it. This does not mean that the Demiurge is some being out there. The, the Demiurge isn't real in the sense of being an entity. The Demiurge is real in the sense that 
when I attempt to understand God, I am destined to fail. And so my image of God in my mind is not God. That's the Demiurge. The Demiurge isn't a second lesser God. It's just, you don't understand God. You're human. God's God. God's bigger than you. Sophia isn't a person. It's a Greek word that means wisdom. You have Sophia within you. We all do. And when you attempt to understand God, you're creating the Demiurge. Just accept that you can't understand God. God's too big. Just accept that. Life will get way easier. Lucifer, right? Another thing people like to talk about. Lucifer is essentially a comic book character. And by that I mean he's not something with scriptural basis to him. He isn't in the Bible. There's two passages in the Bible. They are Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. So if you read those chapters and the sections surrounding them, that is the entirety of where the foundation for this Lucifer myth stems from is there's what's translated to English as shining one or bright one. The Hebrew word was Hillel. That got translated into Latin as Lucifer, Luciferus. That's where it all comes from. Read, what was it, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. That is the entirety of the name Lucifer appearing in the Bible. And if you read that, you'll understand why this whole Lucifer myth is not something that came from a prophet at any point in time. Because that's not what they were talking about. Just read the Bible. Um, if you want to know about Satan, read the book of Job. The book of Job will tell you what Satan really can and can't do. And if you don't want to read the longest book in the Bible, the book of Job, I'll summarize it for you. Satan can only do what God allows Satan to do. Satan cannot hurt you unless God gives Satan permission to hurt you. And the only reason God will give Satan permission to hurt you is if it's to test your faith because God believes you're holier than Satan believes you are, and God really loves proving Satan wrong. Don't ask me, it's in the Bible. Um, the election rule. You can Google it, nothing will show up. I made it up. The election rule is based off the golden rule. The golden rule being treat others as they treat you. No, that's the election rule. The, the golden rule is treat others as you wish to be treated. The election rule is based off the assumption that everyone has heard of the golden rule by now. So if others are living by the golden rule, they treat others as they wish to be treated, the election rule follows that they are telling you how to treat them by treating you a certain way. So however someone treats you, that's how they want to be treated. That's the election rule. Oh, here's my last bit on magic. It's about boasting. Boasting is anti-magic. And I'm going to contrast boasting with a small brag. A small brag is when you say, I can do that, and then you do more than what you said you could do. That's a form of humility. This is contrasted with boasting, which is when you overpromise and claim you can do things that you have no ability to fulfill. And what that does when you make these boasts is it makes people lose faith in you because they know you, you make claims you have no ability to back up. That goes with what I said in the beginning of this video, which is that true magic, real magic, the kind of magic that allows you to work miracles is under-promising, over-delivering, and making people believe in you. That's the heart and core of magic. Is that everything? That's not everything. How to know you're on the right path. You know you're on the right path when you hear God's voice clearly, unambiguously, without confusion as to the source. When you can tell people, God told me this, and they accept it without any skepticism about you receiving God's word. God tells us in scripture that he will send a famine of his word to disbelievers, that they may learn the error of their ways and return to his. God does not instruct the rebellious. 
if you are rebelling against God, you will not hear God telling you what to do because this is God telling you what to do. Read the Bible. It's in the Bible. I'm pretty sure that part about the family of the word is in the book of Amos. I didn't write down the chapter or even the book, but I'm pretty sure it's Amos. About aliens. I just wanted to touch on this. I've been abducted in my sleep by the greys, so I know firsthand there's some truth to that stuff. Uh, the story is not fit for YouTube. It is not sanitized. But suffice to say, it, it revealed less than I would like. It, it simply confirmed for me that there's something there. Uh, for what it's worth, I asked to be abducted multiple times before it happened, so... Uh, I met Grace. Regarding signs. God fills the world with signs for those who heed them. The opening of Genesis, where God worked for six days and rested for one, and the fact that good food is expensive, but cheap food lacks nutrition, tells us that God desires we labor more than we rest. You can't afford to feed yourself properly if you don't work enough. And that's a fact of life. And the facts of life, that's what informs us of God's will. If you look around at the way the world is, you can see the signs of that. Uh, God sent three messengers, three holy days. We talk about Muhammad, Moses, and whichever pope it was that declared Sunday the Sabbath day. And he sent one messenger, a calendar, that, that uh, two of those three had never heard of, that being Pope Gregory the whatever is who made the Gregorian calendar that we all use. So from this, I draw the sanctity of the 40-hour work week as well as the sanctity of the three-day weekend because God can labor for six days and rest for one. I'm not God. You're not God. One day off is enough for God. I feel like there's a reason three messengers gave us three days. We're not supposed to hold ourselves to God's standard because that's vanity to put yourself at the level of God. Um, that's all for my notes, but one thing I want to touch on, uh, Freemasonry gets brought up a lot in conspiracy circles. I'm a Freemason. I'll probably make a video on that at some point. Um, the short version, our third degree doesn't teach us to lie. I find it distasteful a lot of Freemasons like to crack jokes and play up the mystery of it. We're, we're just supposed to keep our mouths shut about the very few things that we can't talk about, which basically are the things that would let you sit in a lodge meeting without going through the initiation. So you, you can't fake your way in. Uh, the, the other reason we're supposed to keep quiet about what's in the lectures and stuff is because it's, it's really more impactful if you get it as a, you know, so-called virgin, you, you then expose yourself to it. I read a book about all of the rituals before I joined. Um, it was by William Morgan. You can look it up and it's accurate. I'd suggest you, you just talk to Freemasons and maybe petition a lodge. There's good stuff in there, but there, there's no Satanism in it. Um, I have heard that on the East Coast, there's, like, a couple lodges with one Satanist in them. If anyone wants to pay my travel expenses, I'll go out and visit those lodges and talk to these guys myself to see what's up. But I live in South Dakota, so that's quite a trip for me. Um, more on that in another video. Peace be with you.